teams and make great individuals is something you have to do daily. When I mean daily is when no one's watching. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Not, not round practice, not round games. It's just the bus rides, the hotels, the bringing people together to dinners. I think that's what Pop did a great job yeah. of. I mean, it's the daily things that yeah. makes you a champion. There's Paul Pierce with the 08 championship trophy, the Larry O'Brien. And here's Ray Allen. Should be an emotional homecoming for Ray. Obviously went to school at UConn and won a championship there in Boston. So many legendary players. Posey. James Posey. Great guy. There's Perk. Big baby. Big baby can get a seat this game. <laughs> yeah. they, they, got him, they got him a seat for this game. That, yeah, Scalabrini, yeah. the yeah. Red Mamba. Eddie House. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take, let's take it out to NBC Sports Boston. We appreciate them offering up this ceremony to our viewers here live on NBA TV. Danny Ainge back in the building where he put this team together, swinging that huge trade with his buddy Kevin McHale for Garnett. Let's get it out to NBC Sports Boston. The ceremony will be emceed by the voice of the Celtics, the legend himself, Mike Gorman, as we get it out to TD Garden for Kevin Garnett's jersey retirement ceremony live here on NBA TV. Sixth man I ever had. Are you fans right up there? I knew every single night that we stepped on the court that we were to give it our best shot. And a lot of times those were championship years, but I was lucky enough to win three of them here. And those were absolutely the best days of my life. No offense at all to my good friends in Springfield, Massachusetts, but the Hall of Fame is right here. This is the Hall of Fame. I dedicated my life to basketball. And I dedicated my life to the Boston Celtics. What more can I say? Thank you, Boston. I love you. Where would I be without the fans? Where would I be without you guys? The best fans in the world. Celtic pride will always be with me and my family. With the fifth pick in the 1995 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy in Chicago. One of the most intense players you'll see in any sport. The newest member of the Boston Celtics, Kevin Garnett. They turn it over. Alley back to Kevin. Oh, baby! Woo! Give me every ounce that you have, and we're going to give it right back to you. Finds a trailer Pierce. Behind the back to Garnett. Scored and the foul. Here comes Garnett. Here comes the roar. And a foul. 22 years, but the game's original monarchy has regained the throne. It is Banner 17. Let me hear that. Let me hear it. Let me feel it.
welcome tonight's host, NBC Sports Boston play-by-play -play announcer, Mike Gorman. Mike. Thank you. And I'd like to welcome everybody here, everybody watching across the country, and everybody watching around the world to the Kevin Garnett number retirement ceremony. You know, it was about 14 years ago, and I remember it pretty clearly. You go left out of the hotel, you go down to the bottom of the hill, you jump on the train that's there, you go until the very last stop, and right there, there being a World War II armory that was actually the home court now for an Italian basketball team. Now, why is that important to know? That's where Kevin Garnett would play his very first game in a Celtic uniform. I remember being really anxious to see KG play. I mean, this is a Celtic team that had lost 18 straight games this previous year. I mean, we, we needed help. I didn't even want to broadcast the game. I just wanted to sit around and watch this guy and see if he could possibly be as good as everybody said he was. By halftime, I wanted to find Danny, H Danny Ames rather than give him a hug. This guy was, this guy was crazy good. He covered fives, he covered ones. He destroyed anybody who tried to get near his basket. He got all the rebounds. He passed out a half dozen or so assists. He had a couple of blocks, maybe two or three steals. He screamed at an opponent. He coached one of his own teammates, and he stared down an official. And most of all, he played this preseason game in a suburb of Rome. With about 99% of the United States asleep, he played that game like it was his last. And so he would all year long. From that primal scream that preceded every single game to the smile on his face that Dino could bring, to Gino rather, with some dancing. And after destroying everybody in the East and the Lakers in the West, he rode into the NBA Finals. And then he rode around the city of Boston on the bow of a duck boat while thousands came out to cheer Kevin Garnett. So for all the radio guys, Kevin, and the audio guys, and the camera guys, and the tape guys, and the guys in the truck, and the staff of the TD Garden, all the people, and the vendors, and the ushers, and the security, men and women who work here, the police, the medics, the bull gang, but most of all, for the fans who jumped on, who held on, and loved every minute. For them, I say, thanks for the ride, Kevin. Thanks for the ride. It's just like the old days, Kevin. You get perk right behind you there, I see, right over your shoulders. We've got a long list of good speakers tonight. I would like to have the first one be the person who told the truth about Kevin Garnett. And that would be the truth, Paul Pierce. with anything prepared, so I guess I'll just speak on how I feel. Uh, you know, what more could be said about a person that hasn't already been said? You know, we all know what he brought to the table night in and night out. Um, his intensity, um, 
his passion, his dedication. I mean, all those words, you know, you, you say so many things that, that describes Kevin. And, um, you know, I, I just want to say, and I know I speak for myself, and I speak for the fans, I just want to personally thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, as we all know, you know, before you got here, we had one of our worst seasons, and uh, you were just that injection in the arm that we needed. And uh, you know what? What better way to revive a franchise than bring the energy that Kevin brought every night, his spirit, his passion, his play. Um, you know, fans, you guys, you had a chance to see him on the court, you know, and I, and I was lucky enough to meet Kevin as a teenager and kind of know him and see him away from the court. But, you know, he, he's probably the nicest person. Uh, he has the best stories. Um, I, I tell you that. I, and I remember sitting on the plane and it was like every year, you know, I'm right here and he's sitting with the young guys and he's telling the same story. And I'm hearing the same story every year. And I notice how the story always changes. And I was like, <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. He, he, I mean, <laughs> but that was Kevin, man. He always brought the group together. Uh, he was the most selfless. I mean, he'll give you his last. And uh, we appreciate it. We appreciated you, man. I mean, you brought, you brought, you brought a, a sense of culture to this city that was desperately, desperately needed. And, and you, you brought Boston pride, Celtic pride back. So, so again, I want to thank you as I want to thank you as a teammate, as a friend, as a brother, and just speaking for everybody in this city, the crowd, ownership group, every player that you had that had an opportunity to play with you. We love you, man. Thank you. KG, congratulations. Thank you for all the good years you gave us. Thank you for being a Boston Celtic. Thank you, thank you, thank you for deciding to become a Celtic. Congratulations. There's no more deserving player than you. Your tenure as a player has been one of the most inspirational periods of the Celtics history. I never heard anyone say, I bleed green. And KG, you're the first. I'd like to congratulate him on having his jersey retired, but more so for being who he was, the right person at the right time for a city that needed him. KG, thanks for all the years in Boston. You really brought that energy and that liveliness back to us. KG, the Boston fans loved you. You changed the culture of the team. You made us a champion. KG, congratulations on getting your number retired. It's exactly where it needs to be, up in the rafters. Being on that Celtic team, that 08 championship team, man, was unbelievable. Your leadership, your professionalism, man. And I'm, I'm glad that the jerseys man retired. My brother, big KG, big ticket, big Lord. Just want to congratulate you on having your jersey retired. You were the fiercest competitor I've ever played with. But other than that, you were the greatest teammate I ever played with. I appreciate you, brother. Love. Health and wealth. Congratulations. Man, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped right now. It is possible. possible! From the bottom of my heart, I want to make sure that you enjoy this day, enjoy the moment, and we're all rooting for you for life. We have truly been blessed as Celtics fans to have watched you close up do what you did for the Celtics and for the rich lore of the Celtics history. I'm, I'm happy for you, and uh, there's no bigger fan, and good for you, bud. KG, thank you for reminding us that anything is possible. Welcome to the rafters. Now you're here forever. You are always here in our heart, Boston fans. Now you're here up in the banners, too, so forever you go. Thank you so much for all the wonderful time uh, and years that you gave us. The mark that you've left on the game, it's only fitting that your number is being retired in Boston, 
your jersey is going to hang in a place that is, I mean, that's hallowed ground, the Boston Celtics. So congratulations. You earned it. You deserve it. The Celtics greats and the Laker greats, they are different than the rest of the league because the tradition of the Lakers and the Celtics is something truly special that we all marvel at, and you deserve to be there, my friend. Hey, G, Clemmy and I want to add to the many congratulations you're getting for this well-deserved honor. We really appreciate the fact that you helped all of us raise our game. There are a lot of people that talk about being authentic today. You are the authentic leader. You help not only your teammates raise their game, but those of us in the peanut gallery as well. Congratulations. We love you, man. Best wishes. Big fella, congratulations, man. Definitely an honor to be one of the greats going up in Raptors here as a Boston Celtic. Sad I can't be here. Obviously, you know I'm working, but I want to wish you the best of luck. I'll holler at you when you get back on the west side. Love. Well, KG, congratulations on getting your number retired. Uh, <laughs> Seems like a long time ago that you and I were in that gym in Chicago before the draft and uh, come a long way, big fella. And I couldn't be happier or more proud of you for your career and everything you've done. And so congratulations. Number going up in the Raptor is fantastic. Congratulations, man. This is about you, my friend. Congratulations. Kevin, welcome to the club of South Jim Rose. I'm glad to see you are now a member of this elite club. Always enjoyed watching you play, and now our jerseys hang together in the rafters. As you once said, anything is possible. Congratulations. I just, I love it that you guys booed Isaiah. That's awesome. We now would like to invite Kevin to join Celtics managing partner Wick Grosbeck and his wife Amelia Fazolari, along with co-owners Steve and Judy Paliuka and Bob and Esther Epstein for the presentation of gifts. Kevin is being presented a replica of the retired number banner on which the number five will permanently live in the rafters. An original work of art by esteemed artist Daniel Maltzberg, a colleague that includes a piece of the original Boston Garden Parquet, a custom engraved bottle of Sincoro Extra Anino Tequila, and an NFT gift basket, including five original collectibles. Please welcome the Celtics managing partner and governor, Wick Grosbeck. Kevin, I got five words for you. Five words. Heart, commitment, loyalty, leadership, championship. Everyone in this building, everyone in the world, knows what you did when you came here in 07. That first practice, you brought all your energy, you changed everything. You've got great teammates, great coaching, great fans. You changed everything when you came in. I saw it, we felt it. You played defense like we haven't seen since Bill Russell. You brought Celtic pride back to everybody around the world. You carried us forward, and we put that banner in the ceiling. I'm here to say, I think we're all here to say, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We put together a video we're going to roll right now. This video shows everybody who you are, what you're about, what it takes to be a great Celtic, what it takes to be a great man, a great champion, and the last number five that will ever play for the Boston Celtics. This is a love story. The classic love story. The story of a player, a team, and a city that were destined to be together. When I look at the body of work, the six years I was here, no one can ever take that away from us. That was our era. That's what we embedded in history, and uh, that's forever. I think we will always bleed green as long as we're playing basketball, as long as we're living, even when they bury us six feet. It's just what it's going to be. With the fifth pick in the 1995 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy in Chicago. In 1995, Kevin Garnett changed the game. He found a new home in the NBA in Minnesota. Through long winters, the kid became the big ticket and eventually the franchise. He was the MVP, the best defender of his generation. But a run to the conference finals was as close as he would get to his dream. In 1995, the Celtics also found a new home. There were also long winters and a run to the conference finals. But something or someone was missing. By 2007, the unselfish superstar and the star-crossed franchise were still a thousand miles apart. In light years, it felt, from a title. Right now, some breaking news. Jackie McCollin of the Boston Globe and ESPN reports a deal is in place to send Kevin Garnett to the Celtics. So we begin with a big ticket. That's right. Kevin Garnett, officially a member of the Boston Celtics. The newest member of the Boston Celtics, Kevin Garnett. But when you speak on basketball, you speak on fans and how they feel about their sports here, I mean, it's a, it was a no-brainer. I thought this is my probably my best opportunity of winning the ring. Here we are, playing number five. I've never been around a player like Kevin, ever. I've never seen a guy that committed to winning. And the reason his voice is strong is because he backs it up with his actions. Anything less than a championship is a failure. That's what it is. It's only one winner. Kevin Garnett and the Celtics, people said, just needed something more to reach the top of the mountain. Turns out what they needed was each other. He made his teammates better. He made the fans crazier. He made the garden louder. And he made the Celtics the Celtics again. in a city, single-minded in their purpose, joined together to chase a dream, well... It is beyond anyone's wildest dreams the degree to which the Celtics are dominant. Here comes Garnett, here comes the roar, and foul. Here's the head of the pack, back to Garnett for the slam. KG crashes to the floor, but so might have the hopes of the Los Angeles Lakers. KG finds the ball!
Kevin Garnett returned the Celtics to the throne. Today, he becomes Celtics royalty. Celtic fans, please welcome to Center Court for a conversation hosted by Brian Scalabrini. I love it, the man who did put the Celtics in Celtics again, Kevin Garnett. Yeah! Bean time! Suit up, boy, I might come out here and woo. I know I gotta bring my A game here. Hey, listen, man, I, I knew y'all fuck with me, but I ain't know y'all fuck with me like this. You know, they told me that you said, I want Scal to interview me. Yeah, man, you're doing your thing, man. Congratulations, man. I love watching you on the broadcast. Congratulations on the Emmys, man. You're doing your thing. I want the white mama, damn it. Right. You, you nervous? Look. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was nervous when they told me. We, dog, we up in chilling. You got it? All right. What's this day mean to you so far? This is incredible, man. Um, I, I swear, man. With, I want to thank, uh, obviously, the NBA, David Stern, rest in peace, Adam Silver. But I got to thank Wick and the ownership group. Thank you, Wick, for the last side. I totally, yeah, you, I couldn't have pictured, I couldn't have pictured this. I, I didn't expect this at all. When you, when you got here, you looked up at the numbers. When did you start thinking, like, that's where I want to be cemented in history? You know, crazy, I'm gonna tell a crazy story, man. He probably ain't gonna want, want to hear this, but uh, Antoine Walker, man, before I got here, shout out to Cyber Twan. Yeah, Cyber Twan. You know what it is, right? You know, me and Cyber Twan went at it, you know, for years. He was like a foe, and, and, and before I came here, he pulled me to the side and he just gave me some, some great words of wisdom. And um, I took that into the press conference, and the first thing I did after the press conference is come in here. And I looked up at the rafters and I just manifested not only a championship, but seeing myself immortal in the, in the, in the ceiling. Feel me? So, so it's safe to say that I manifested this, yeah. yeah I want to dive into your intensity. Like, how, where did that start from? You know, my coach is here from Farragut, Coach Wolf. Shout the Wolf, you know what I'm saying? I know you in here somewhere. He was, I like to think that he gave me the tools and, and, and kind of the the know-how to get out of my own way and to, to actually not to be afraid to have a style. And the style was all energetic. You know, I'm a passionate person. Um, and he, he gave me kind of the, the know-how to just go out and actually be who you are, man. Let that passion out. Let people see who you really are on the court. And I've just been able to be like that since I, since, since I left Wolf, actually. You, you talked about how sometimes it was hard for you to control the intensity. You had to find out like how to make it so you could take that energy and put it on the court. Who helped you with that? I wouldn't say uh, it was. Uh, it was more of a how to control the energy because you know no one tells you how to actually use your superpower, right? You know, real, real talk. You know, my mom's a real energetic person. She's a very hardworking lady, and I watched her work hard. And you know, it's, it's like in my DNA. So at times I would have problems when I would lose and turning it off and being able to control it, being honest. But, you know, yoga, manifestations, being zen, you find it. I figured it out. Your, your focus is unmatched by any, and I, I think we can all say this, any of your teammates, we've all had teammates, your focus was next level. 
Like, how do you get to that point? That clock hits 60, starts ticking down, you become yeah. a different guy. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, if I'm being honest, man, I'm, I'm a... Um... I'm a professionalist. I'm a professionalist, you know? And uh, I can't even front, man. At night, it would, it would drive me crazy. I know we up here having fun, but it's been some nights where I haven't had much sleep, and, and I watched 30 tapes on a guy, and I'm watching, and I can't turn off. You know, it sounds like a good thing now, but at times, it really haunted me. But, you know, I got it under control, and it worked for me. When you're in Minnesota, you're struggling, and you, you guys talk about or you want to maybe call Paul Pierce, or, or you want to figure out how to team up here. Like, how was, the, how was those conversations? What was that summer like before, you know, finally? Because I know you're a really loyal guy yeah. to an organization, to a city. Yeah. How hard was that to do that? Uh, being loyal is something that's part of my DNA, man. I were, you know, P and I are real friends in real life, so whenever I would run into him in, like, the All-Star Games, we'd always have a chat. He would always bring it up. We would always flirt with it. You know, I think the one time I came in here uh, and played, had a decent night in here, he shot something to wit, and we kind of had a laugh about it. And then when it started to become real life, we actually got serious, and uh, the infamous Danny Ainge came and saw me, and it was history. Shout to Danny Ainge in here, yeah. You also, you also said that when you got here, you were better able to handle those conversations with management, ownership you know, uh, coaches, players. Like, you, you felt like you were a different leader when you walked onto this floor. Yeah, Minnesota, I like to shout out Minnesota, man, because they actually predicated me and molded me to be able to come to Boston with know-how, you know? When I got here, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to have a certain understanding with the ownership group. Doc and I was always on the, on, on the same page. And uh, when it came to communicating with the players, that was an easy thing, but um, th those, those years in Minnesota actually brewed me for the, for the time that I, that I got to uh, Boston. Now you get here 07, 08, right from the jump, pickup games. Right. It's intense. Right. You know, you had, for first we're going to shout out the bench. Right. You know, Leon, Big Baby, Facts. Eddie House, they, they're coming at you in the pickup games. You know, you know, was, you know I was listening to the, 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 the videos and everything in here, and um, I kept hearing that it was saying that I came here and made players better, and in, in all actuality, those players made me better. And I like to think that we made each other better. Now, I want to say something, man. I want, it's good to see Ray Allen here, man, real shit. Hey, Lord, it's good to see you here, Ray. You next, Lord. Next, damn it. Right. But I like to think that these players made me better, man. And um, I'm a very focused individual. I take my craft really serious. I work really hard. You know, a lot of players say they're in the gym, but I'm really in the gym. And then, you know, you know, like I'm really working on mine. And I like to think that baby, big perk, Leon, everybody on our squad made me better, man. I thank y'all for that. Real talk. Shout, real shit. Specifically with, with Ray and Paul, like, you know, Ray works, Paul works. You know, 40 minutes, next day, 9 a.m., one-on-one -on -one game. Do you always keep your eye on those two and the work that they were putting in, try to one-up each other? Not one-up each other, but you got to know, real recognized, real, and still sharp and still. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when I come in here and I'm watching them work, they watching me work. You know what I'm saying? And we all pushing each other. We something Ray do. Uh, in his drills that made him a better shooter. I would take a little bit of that. Uh, P has some stuff that, you know, on the one-on-one -on -one game, I actually took a little bit of his patience and his, and his IQ. So, yeah, I was, I was taking everything. Eddie House, one of the best shooters I've ever seen in my life. You know what I'm saying? Big Pert was one of the best defenders. Big Baby for his to be short and know how to use his size and space. I was, I was taking stuff from everybody, man. Let's get into the... Uh... The playoffs, the run, Atlanta, Cleveland, you know, Detroit. 
you know, like, uh, what was that run like for you being here? Like, the that run was crazy, if I'm being honest, man. Um, I have been to playoffs before. Obviously, this was our first run. But if I'm being honest, man, we had so much confidence in ourselves and our team that I really think that, man, the only thing that could stop us was injuries. Real talk, man. If we don't get injured, man, we, we get about a couple more rings out of this. You know what I'm saying? That was just my only hope. But that run, man, that run was one of the more magical runs I've ever had in the playoffs. Uh, probably be, more, be more, one of the more memorable things. Um, I got my kids here today. Capri and Coke's here with me. Capri was born in the year we won it. Thank y'all for being my date today. Thank you, Capri. Thank you, Cavalli. I love y'all. Right? Shout out to the Pilata family in here. I didn't get to see y'all in here. Jim Pilata, the Pilata family. I know y'all in here. Yeah, but that was a magical run, man, and I'll never forget that. So, so Kevin is always linked to legendary stories, right? So we, can we get this, let's get this arm wrestling story cleared up. Perk just tell me it was two guys. I thought it was just Baby. Baby was crushing everybody. Why did you challenge him? If I'm being honest, man, I didn't really want to do any of it. I was just sitting back like the OG, just watching everybody like, <laughs> Like, look at these dumb yeah. um, uh, here playing arm wrestling. You know, we got a game tomorrow. What y'all doing? Y'all arm wrestling? And, you know, Classic P, man. Classic P got up, baby slamming. You know, first Baby and Leon. Y'all don't know this, but Baby and Leon, like the little brothers, that's always wrestling, fighting, biting, grabbing. So we always breaking them two up. So, you know, they arm wrestling. Meanwhile, Doc letting us do all this, by the way, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know, babies, babies, you know, slam Leon, boom. Eddie House, everybody jump up, T.A., yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. So big fella come out of his shirt, slobbing, rah! <laughs> Me and Pete kind of sitting back watching it, and then Pete go, shit, you want to do that to Ticket? <laughs> and I was like, man, chill out, man, I ain't really on that. And then baby was like, shit, what, what's up, what's up? <laughs> we got a bang, big fella. You want it, come get it. I love you, Lord. You know I love you. You know I love you. I love you, Lord, but it can only be one silverback on here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me tell you the setup. So Paul Pierce, he put all the money on Kevin. Nobody else bet Kevin. Nobody on the plane bet KG except for Paul Pierce. Facts. Talk about pressure. <laughs> right. Shout to P for that, yo. He had his back no matter what. No Ed matter what. Facts. By the way, we had a train at the time, Ed LeCert. Shout to Ed LeCert. Ed LeCert was sweating so much. <laughs> Ed, Le Ed LeCert was sweating so much. And you know, I'm cheap, right? You know that. Right. Yeah. I know you just sitting back watching. Nah. Scott ain't finna bet on nothing. Nah, I put 500 on baby. It was the best 500 I ever spent. <laughs> I, I don't know how you did it. Man. I don't know good. how you nah, did it. Nah, man, you know I'm stronger than what I look like, Scott. I don't get it messed <laughs> up, all right? It's that will, man. It's that will. All right. Like, okay, a couple songs, right? First of all, In the Air Tonight. That thing starts to rocking right before the drums, right? Absolutely. What's that mean to you? You know, I actually attached my heartbeat to that song. When I hear that song, I go into another zone. It's hard for me to be at a game with my kids watching the game and then they play that because I always go there. But, um... That song used to speak to me. It used to speak to my core. And my favorite part of when where I played here was when we'd be in the back and they would play that song before we came out. We would run out the same tunnel. I was already locked in before I hit the flow, man. I was already on demon mode. I was already on destroy this motherfucker mode. You know what I mean? Hey, you love music, right? Say what? You love music. I love music. Love it. Music and vibration is everything. Yeah. yeah. So. Like, this is real talk. How, how could you listen to the same song in the locker room, in the weight room, on the practice floor, on the plane, on the bus, for two weeks straight, the same song? How is that possible? So I'm not a foodie, and, you know, I'm not a guy that's a big fan of food, but once I find something I like, I stay with it. No matter what? No matter what, especially if it's working. So if that song was working for the two weeks, you best believe we're going to run that back for another two weeks. You know what I'm saying? It's the best way to explain that. Don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You feel me? <laughs> he loved it. We all didn't like it, but we, we, a lot of us love 
KG for a lot of reasons. His choice of the same song for two straight weeks and we're around each other for eight hours a day was not one of your greatest qualities. It's all good. It wasn't for y'all. It wasn't for y'all. It was for myself. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not, no one would touch the radio. No one would touch nothing. They complained, but they wouldn't do anything about it. Shout to Rondo, because Rondo loved the radio, man. Yeah, Rondo. Right. You next, Nah. <laughs> he would say something. Nah, I'm definitely going to say something. He wasn't scared. No way. I, give, me, give me your... Uh, your version of your relationship with Gino on those blowouts. <laughs> Shout out to Gino. So, so for me, when Gino came out, I already knew we was up like 30 or 40. So when Gino came on, it was like I was, I was able to turn off the focus. I was able to enjoy like the game or the rest of the game. I was able to enjoy the guys that got to play for the rest of the game. And that's what Gino was for me. Gino was time for me to sit back and enjoy the game. So whenever it came on, Day one, when y'all played Gino on the joint, that meant we won. And we won by a big fashion, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I was around KG for three years, and not one time, you can't find a teammate ever say anything where KG would ever put a teammate down. There was one time, one time, we're playing the San Antonio Spurs, and Matt Bonner is in here dominating, right? And we go in the locker room, and we're talking, man, you got to watch Popovich. You got to watch, man, you know what? R.C. Buford put the good team. Paul Pierce stands up and he says, who got Bonner? And you know you had Bonner. Who got Bonner? You look at Paul and say, I got Bonner. But he wouldn't be wide open if I didn't have to help your ass on Ginobili. <laughs> One time. Hey, true story. I'm, I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. But yeah, I got my ass kicked by B Matt Bonner here because of Paul Pierce. <laughs> Thanks, P. <laughs> nah, but that was part of you guys' relationship. Like, he, could, he was the one guy, well, Rondo too, but those guys could talk to you like that and you would go to another level. Bonner didn't see the hoop in the second half. And you saved me because, you know, I was thinking, Danny Ainge signed the wrong ginger, man. Like, it, it probably should have signed him instead of me. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it right now, all right? Uh, you the white mama, all right? I do. Matt Bonner's not the white mama, you understand? All right, KG, you got the floor, man. Anything you want to say to these people? No, I just want to say thank you again, Wick. Thank ownership. I want to thank Danny Ainge for the vision. I want to thank Doc Rivers for coaching us hard and getting us to a point where we was invincible. I want to thank all the guys, man, for showing up. Thank y'all for coming here today, man. It meant a lot, man. To all the Celtics that's playing here, man, thank y'all for staying. I appreciate it. JT, all y'all, man, I root for y'all, man. Good luck in the playoffs. Keep kicking some ass. Keep playing together. You know what I'm saying? Last but not least, man, I want to thank all y'all, man. It's been real, man. I would have never thought y'all loved me like this. I love you, Boston. I love you, Northeast. I love y'all, man. we've all been waiting for a culmination of a legendary career and at this time we welcome Kevin and his family over to the banner as they raise it to its rightful place up in the rafters.
Celtics fans, how about one final applause for number five, Kevin Thank you, God. Thank you once again to all the fans and distinguished guests 